Stasis 23 here, and today we have a new one coming from a new knife company, Econic Knives, and this is the Casador model. And uh, they really kind of caught my eye for a few reasons. First, they have several of my favorite knife makers that they're doing collaborations with on their designs. This one right here is a collaboration with J.I. Knives, or if you might know him as Jonas Iglesias, a very, very prominent, popular custom knife maker. And before this Casador, the cheapest knife you could get designed by J.I. Knives that I'm aware of uh, was a production fuse model of his that was $395. And that, that particular knife is an exclusive to Cut FJ and they are completely sold out. And just to get an idea, this is what some of his customs go for in the secondary market. Uh, as you can see, the prices are very high up there out of majority of our ranges, um, you know, and I, I liked a lot of them. So when I saw that one of his designs were going to be produced and made readily available through this new knife company, Iconic Knives, I jumped on it. Jumped on that opportunity. Let's go through it and see what you think. The Casador comes in three different variations. First, you have the one that I have with the satin blade and the brown the canvas micarta. Then you could also get it with a black wash blade and black canvas micarta for that murdered out look. And the third variation comes with a satin blade and olive green canvas micarta. Let's get some quick specs out of the way. You have a total length of 6.92 inches, so it's a medium to smaller knife. Blade length of 3.06 inches. A grip area from here all the way to the back of 3.6 inches. A handle scale thickness of half an inch. And the stock thickness on this one's coming in at 0.127 inches. And the behind the edge thickness on my particular knife is around 18 thousandths behind the edge and it's sharpened at around 24 degrees per side. All right, let's take a closer look at this. You have a satin finished D2 steel drop point blade right here with a nice top swedge that tapers all the way down to that tip, thinning out that tip for doing piercing type task or the drag type task with that tip. You have the iconic knives logo on this side and on this side you have the blade steel designation of course, I would have liked to see that not on there. You already had the logo, but you know, I know they're a new company, so I get it. You have an excellent sharpening choil. As you can see, I love how they did that, where they go all the way up right there and, and not making it super huge and still giving you a good bit of sharpening life because that plunge line is curved and comes down to the back right here. So you're going to be able to sharpen it almost, you know, a little over an eighth of an inch before it even thinks about widening it up in the back. Excellent job there. No jimping up top, but you do have a nice flat spine right here to breast your thumb. I didn't see any need for the jimping, but I know some people enjoy that. You have a saber flat grind on here. It comes down to a reasonably thin edge. Let's see how well it performs. The knife came with a really sharp factory edge and was passing through the cardboard very cleanly. The drop point blade has a low enough tip, so you have a very gentle curve in the belly. So I was able to keep that blade into the cardboard without sliding out toward the end, like you do with say like a clip point. Uh, the edge felt great all the way to the end, and so far the handle is fairly comfortable as well. Now we move on to the pine 2x4 to test the ergos and how well that edge wants to bite into that wood. I was able to make really fine curls rather easily, so I started to apply more pressure into the wood uh, to see how it felt in hand and see how well that edge wanted to bite. Um, I was able to get a lot of pressure in that hammer grip and it remained comfortable throughout. I tried uh, pretty much every grip you can think of with this knife and they were all super comfortable. No hot spots to speak of with my medium sized hand, um, which is not always the case with flat scaled knives. This one has uh, just a very uh, organic lines to that handle, no crazy choils anywhere. So I think that helped out a lot. Now we move on to the half inch twisted sisa rope. And this is where I get to see what type of uh, bite this edge has. 
and it can either make this test miserable or enjoyable depending. Luckily the Edge has a good bit of bite to it and not to mention it was very sharp near that tip where I'm doing you know just about all the cutting. I did mainly push cuts without a ton of downward force into that rope. Um, it was comfortable in that pinch grip. I felt locked in and uh, I ended up making it around 35 cuts before I ended up running out of the piece of rope I had and the edge still felt great all the way to the end. So let's hope and I'm ho hoping that it remains that way to the end of the next test. The tip of the knife is in line with the center of the pivot. So you don't have a very abrupt belly. It's a very gradual belly all the way to that tip. So doing drag cuts is a breeze and it has that perfect amount of belly to cut on a flat surface in that pinch grip like we talked about earlier and it was very comfortable in uh, all this portion of the testing as well however the thicker edge bevel coming in at 24 degrees per side does require a little bit more pressure to get started into the cuts with those rubber tubings and this dense car corner core board just because um, you know it's it's kind of collapsing on the the uh, behind the edge thickness of the uh, primary bevel. When I get to the roll of denim though, however, I was super shocked on how much bite this edge still had. It blasted through this and did way better than two Nitro V knives I tested right before this knife. Now let's test this edge after all that cutting. It still felt really good. Let's see. Yeah. Still very good edge. Nice. Alrighty, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting. I enjoyed making it for y'all and I enjoyed seeing how well this knife performed. Now let's take a look at the action of this knife. It's riding on ceramic bearings with a ceramic detent ball. It's a thumb stud deployment knife, comfortable thumb studs. They stick out far enough so you can access them rather easily for my medium sized hands, nice and snappy and very, very, very smooth action. Uh, I can reverse flick it if I want to. And I, I think it's the action on this knife that really blew me away because it's not just smooth. You, you don't feel any resistance whenever you're pushing down. It's a very hydraulic feeling, very, very silky smooth. It's kind of hard to put into words on how smooth this knife feels. Um, not to mention, if you take them apart and clean them, they get even smoother. Now let's close it up and take a look at the handle area. Like I said, mine has this brown canvas micarta here. And it's just a flat ground scale with a nice chamfer going all the way around the scales. And they're nice and comfortable. They are shadow boxed to the stainless steel frame, which just means that the, the stainless steel frame sits a little bit proud. However, it was extremely comfortable in hand because hopefully I can show you this without the glare. Um, the stainless steel liners have been crowned, so that just means they're rounded over. So they're very comfortable, a nice added touch, something you usually only see on like the Italian made knives. Very nicely done all the way around. You have the iconic logo there for the pivot that is uh, countersunk and flush with the scales. On this particular one, you do have um, a screw here to hold the covers and then there's two screws underneath here holding the, uh, the actual frame into these two standoffs. The pivot screw is a T8. This screw right here on the scales is a T6 along with the two underneath there. Of course, I would like to see them be all T8. It's not the end of the world for me. Now this knife is tip up, right hand carry only, a deep carry pocket clip with a bent over uh, stainless pocket clip, kind of like on the Best Tech Man Ronin, uh, that same exact style of clip. The clip is inset into the uh, micarta. However, the screws aren't countersunk. Now they are button head rounded screws, so I didn't have any issues with it catching on any of the material in my pants. I found the clip worked excellent. It has perfect amount of ramp 
and it sits pretty darn deep. You just have a little bit sticking out. It does hug this side of the pocket nicely, and you don't have anything that's going to catch your hands when, you know, when the knife's in the pocket. Now let's take a look at the inside. Like I said, you have two hourglass sandoffs here, no lanyard hole, messing up the lines at all. You have some heavy skeletonization, as you can see in there. They did a lot of skeletonizing on the show side, not on, in none on the lock side. However, the weight on this feels pretty good. Let's check it out on the scale. First in grams, coming in at 101.1 grams or 3.56 ounces. Excellent. All right, now let's take a look at the lockup. The lock is sitting at around, I'd say about 40%. Uh, mine has no up or down, no side to side whatsoever. The access to that lock bar is pretty good. This uh, locking tab does stick up a little bit higher than the show uh, side liner. However, they did this chamfer right here. Then you have the rounding, the rounding on the top right there. So it makes it a little bit slippery. Um, However, once again, I use this uh, part of my thumb right here to slide that over and it's no issue whatsoever. Or you could always claw it like uh, old Medford does. But, you know, it, it was it's not terrible or anything, but when you're using the tip of your thumb like that, it, it, it can be a little slick just depending on your thumb size. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Ontario Wrap Model 1 and 2. The one dwarfs it, and even the two is a little bit longer. So like I said, it's a medium to smaller knife. Now here are two great size references. You have the Kubi Hide and the Kaiser Original. Both of these are almost the exact size. Uh, the Hide is probably, uh, you know, the closest in overall length. The Original may be a hair shorter, but the overall feel in hand is similar to the Kubi Hide. Uh, but I will say the Iconic Knives performed better when in the cut and test. And lastly, we have the Civivi Altus and the Civivi Elementum. Both of these are also great references. Uh, it's, it's almost identical in length to the Elementum, but you have more grip area than the Elementum on the Casador, and the Altus is a little bit longer. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints. All right, first off, we're going to talk about the price, okay? I, I get it. The price is $95. Yes, that is steep. Of course, I would love to see this knife at the $50 price range. However, this knife, in my opinion, is more suited for people who are fans of these designers and can't afford their way more expensive knives. Um, I think this is a well-made knife. It has some some uh, fine tuning that a lot of these other knives don't have. Like say this Kubi Hide doesn't have anywhere near the fine tuning that uh, this knife this knife doesn't have anywhere near the fine tuning that the Casador has. You know, just with the rounding of the liners, the edge that it came with, and the edge that it held, uh, the comfort in hand, um, and like I said, the design itself. You know that is you know the main. The main thing here is that you have some of the best of the best designers that they're collaborating with. They have to get paid uh, on their design and the company has to make some money. So I don't think it's super far-fetched. However, I would like to see at that $95, I would much rather see 14C28N instead of D2, uh, especially seeing that they do a good job with it. Of course, I would also love to see the edge bevel you know, brought down to 20 degrees per side. But this is their first set of knives. Do I think they did a great job? Wow, yes, they did a great job for their first knives that they launched, outstanding. The owner is a Marine vet, and it, it makes sense because a lot of time, a lot of Marines that I know are very calculated. They are very precise with the things they do because of their training that they did. Also, he's a super nice guy. I talked with him for a long time, and I paid for this one myself. I always try to do that to try to get a feel for the company before I even think about accepting a knife in for a review for free. All right, next thing on this particular one with the micarta. Um, it, it doesn't have a D-shaped pivot because the pivot underneath has a little notch cut out and there's a little notch inside uh, the, the cutout for the micarta for the pivot to go into and it locks itself in there, kind of like Civivi does sometimes and uh, uh, ZT does it. Now that was fine on my on the uh, Ramon Chavez knife with the G10. However, with this micarta, 
Uh, my card has a much more brittle material when it's nice and thin. So whenever I took this knife apart and went to put it back together, the pivot screw was a uh, tight fitment, which, you know, is a good thing because it's not going to back out as easy. However, whenever I was going to turn it like this, it sheared off that little piece in there. And then this was just free spinning and I couldn't tighten it up. So what I did to remedy it on this one was take some Gorilla Glue and glue this pivot into the micarta and voila, fix the problem. Now, I could have not taken this knife apart. It was uh, out of box, nice and smooth and ready to go. So the only reason I took it apart is because I'm reviewing the knife. I like to kind of dissect what's going on, on the inside, see how well things are put together. And, um, you know, I was impressed from what I saw so far. So maybe go with D-shaped pivots next time or at least on the micarta, make that piece bigger just because my card, I can't really handle that kind of pressure, at least in my experience. Uh, the next thing, just a very minor nitpick. You know, they did a good job of insetting this clip into the uh, micarta. It would have been nice to have countersunk screws as well. But like I said before, they're dome screws and they're rounded. So I had nothing, no problem getting hung up on anything so far. And of course, I know lefties would have loved to see it tapped on the left side as well. And lastly, something we just talked about a little while ago. I love the fact that they did this rounding on the uh, stainless steel liners. I think it looks very nice. It, it adds a greater degree of... Um, you know, precision, or it makes the aesthetics even nicer and more comfortable in hand. However, <laughs> I think they should have not done it right here by the lock bar because as you can see where that, cham they already have this chamfer to make it more comfortable Then you have that rounding. So it can be kind of slick up there at the top. But like I said, remedy it by unlocking it with that corner por portion like I do pretty much anyway all the time. So not a huge deal to me. So overall, I'm excited. I think they're doing good things. I I'm so excited that these designs will be way more accessible to a lot more people that, you know, appreciate the designs coming from some of their, their favorite makers being more readily available to them. Like I said, I understand that these are not going to be for some people who are perfectly fine with, you know, say the Kubi Hide at this price point. Um, it, it's, it's all going to depend on, you know, what you're looking for in a knife. Both of these are great knives. I found this one perf performed better. This one's in 14C, but I found this one performed better overall. Now, I'd love to see this 14C put, you know, I'd like to see this one in 14C as well. And he said that's something that he may be able to do <laughs> later on. He's just getting started up, so it's going to take time, you know. Uh, there's things that you, you do when you first start a company to kind of catch people's attention, you know, like say putting that, the, the big Econic knives, because they're a brand new company. You know, nobody knows what this uh, symbol is yet. It's not, you know, a wide, widely noticeable thing in the community so far. But I think it will be soon because, uh, you know, it's get, these knives are getting out there. More reviewers are reviewing them. And I think they have something good going with some of these awesome makers. Now, the owner of Iconic Knives has been in the community for like 20 plus years. I don't remember exactly how long, but I've met him and I've even talked to him at Blade Show. Super nice guy. So he's been around knives for way longer than most people in the community. Uh, and he has been, before he started this, he's been the, um, I guess you could call manager to these, these designers like J.I. Knives and tons of other big, big popular names, pretty much kind of selling their knives for them. I don't know, like kind of being that uh, broker, I guess you could say. I don't know how, how the title that is exactly, but our manager, whatever you want to call it. So he's not new to the, the knife game. So I'm definitely excited to see where they go from here, what, what designs they come up with next. 
You know, they got Brian Nadeau, who's HEA Designs, uh, which Brian Nadeau, Sharp by Design. Uh, J.I. Knives here. You got Ramon Chavez. Uh, you have Brian Brown. You know, some very awesome makers. I think they have six designers so far. I'm sure I missed at least one. But awesome, awesome designers that are actually putting out, you know, production models of some designs that they've come up with. So love to hear y'all thoughts, opinions. Do you like them? Do you not like them? I understand. I know most of y'all are going to say you wish they were, you know, $30 knives. No, they're definitely, you know, way better than $30 knives. Um, and of course, like I said, I would love to see the price at 50 bucks, but it's, it's going to be hard to hit that for the reasons I talked about earlier, and they're a small startup company. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day, and I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.